Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Adobe Extensions tutorial. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to make an extension that can use graphs. You can even animate these using Chart.js. Now this basically allows you to create all sorts of graphs and we're going to be going over the basics of how to set this up in an extension that works in any program as well as a couple of tips and tricks on how you can start making more complicated graphs that animate or do different things. Before we get started, I do want to remind you down below, hit the subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can check out the base extension code for this, where you can basically have the bare bones and then follow along with the video or easily copy and paste the guide uh, to create the chart yourself. Also, make sure you follow us there on GitHub for coding updates as they come out long before the videos. And down in the description, you can also follow us on Instagram for other live updates. If you're not a member of our Discord server, you can come and join and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expression, hang out with members and useful uh, teachers in the community, and much more. And if you want to help support the YouTube channel, the link will be in the description. You can become a channel member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP, where you can get cool perks like these badges, uh, tutorials, and code in advance, live streams where you can ask questions or just hang out, and much more. And shout out to a couple of our active members on the Discord at this moment. We have Ferris Tavelli, it's Namias, J Pearl, and maybe someday I'll learn how to pronounce it, Joppy, Hoppy, however you'd like to pronounce it. And as you can see, I have just a little bit of a more complicated graph, which I have connected to a crypto API, which is something that you can take on the advanced side of things to load in all the data from the API and be able to display points over time and basically have like a real time preview of a stock or a crypto asset. So let's go ahead and take this extension and I'm going to strip out everything that's important really quick so that we can basically do it from scratch according to the guide on the website. This isn't too big of a deal because we can quickly copy and paste or recreate it. So I'll save that and there's nothing in the my main JS. This is all going to be inside of my HTML. So I'll move this over to the left side and on the right side I'm going to put the chart.js website chartjs.org and let's go ahead and say get started and I think we can go down to the getting started tab and as you can see this looks exactly like the data set that we just created so let's go ahead and follow this and create our first uh, chart or graph extension then we'll do a couple of bonus things as well so first we need to put a canvas with the ID called my chart. The ID is important because this is what it's going to use to search for that particular element. So we need to put this somewhere in our actual HTML code. Uh, in my case, if I go ahead and load the extension now, I'm not really going to have anything. You can see it's just blank. But if I look in my HTML, uh, I'll just put it within my body. If you had some other div or you wanted to have it in a specific area, you could put it within that as well. Uh, you basically just need the canvas with the ID my chart. Then we don't actually need to include a chart.js file. We can get it from online, which is really useful. So above where we're going to basically define it, I'll actually put this up where I, I have my CS interface, my main JS and some jQuery. And I'm just gonna paste this code here. We're just going to include uh, the chart.js from this website. And this will allow us to have all the functionality that we're about to now implement. So we have two things here. We have config and setup. The first thing we need to do is copy and paste our config. As you can see, we're using a const type, which I don't use a whole lot. But now that uh, I'm getting a little more familiar with the newer ECMAScripts, scripts, I'm using the const and let more as, as it permits. And what this does is it defines the configuration of our graph. We want a line graph, but you could also do something like a bar graph and the other types. Data we're going to define in just a second and our options is currently empty. Inside of the setup tab, we have our const for our labels and the const for our data. The data is what's going to be going into this and that's basically going to be all the information from the label or the title of our graph. It's going to also include the background color, which in this case is a really bright color close to whitish and then we also have the border color it's going to have the background and border color of our data itself in this case a very bright hot pink and then we have our data which we have 0 10 and a bunch of other values so since this is data and we need to use the data in this config we should actually paste this before uh, our const config and we have all of our labels here we could even change these to something else just so you get a little 
bit of uh, experience modifying these already. Let's go ahead and give it days of the week instead of uh, months. So we'll say Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. As far as I'm concerned, there's only five days of the week. So we also want to modify our data now. We had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's just make it five values, one for each day of the week. And we can change our title to, um, what do we want to track for days of the week? Um, values for days of the week. And we can also modify the color. Let's just uh, reduce the amount of pink and let's make it primarily blue. One more thing we need to do, it looks like actually we've already done this. This includes setup then config. We already figured that out based on the definition. Uh, so let's go ahead and save this and load it up in our After Effects or whatever application you're using. And as you can see, we are currently blank. I was actually wrong. We do need this code here. Uh, we need to then after all of this, run this bit of code, we're going to create a variable called my chart, which we're going to create a new instance of the chart, which all of that is read in from our chart JS code, we're going to create a new instance of our chart, which is going to apply to our chart canvas, which we defined in our HTML. And it's going to use our config, which has type line graph and all of this data as well. So now if I save this, we should be able to see our graph and start making any changes we want to it. You can see we have a nice blue color. We have our days of the week with the values, which we can highlight over. And we have all of this, which looks really nice. And we can easily rescale it without having to apply like any CSS ourselves. So lastly, let's take a look at a few things we can do to modify this over time. So what's actually driving the values of our graph here? What's driving the values is all of the data here. What we want to be able to do is access this data array and modify it. And we can also access our labels if we want to change our labels over time. So I'm going to, instead of making it a const, I'm going to make it let because I'm going to be modifying it. I don't want it just to be static and not uh, changeable. And what I'm going to do is actually use a set interval. So after I define my graph by creating a new instance of the chart, I'm going to create a set interval function. And let's say every yeah, five seconds sounds good. We're going to run some code. The code we want to run is to add some data and add a day of the week to our labels. So first, what I want to do is I'm going to figure out how we can access the data uh, inside of our data, the data property of our data, because this is an object which contains label and data sets and then data. So I'm going to say alert data data sets and see what that gives me. And we're just going to try and go down here and get what we need. Move this to the other side of the screen. Run our graph. We get an object. All right. Let's say let's go ahead and loop through our object. Say var i in data data sets alert i. Then we'll say run our graph extension. We have zero. Let's go ahead and alert data data sets index i. And that gives us zero as well. Then we get another object from that. All right. So we know we have only one index there. So let's loop through this object. There's probably an easier way to do this, but I think this will work fine. Place that and see what the next level down goes to. We have label. We know where that is. It's uh, actually the first thing of our data set. So that should contain the next one values for days of the week. Then we should get background color, our background color text, border color, border color text, and our data, which is an array of all of these. So we know that we need to get data from there. We need data, data sets, the zero with the value, which I assume means that we can actually create yeah, like even more data after that as much as we want. And then we want the data from within that. And we also want to update the labels on occasion. So inside of my set interval, the first thing I'll say is 
data data sets dot data and I'm gonna push a value. We're just gonna push math dot floor. We're gonna generate a random value math dot random between let's say one and ten ish. Now if we run this, I don't know that it will do anything, but it might just not add a label but continue to add information. Let's wait approximately five seconds is how long our thing is waiting for. And actually one thing I just remembered is we need to update our graph. I believe we can say like update chart or something. What we want to say is grab the chart variable, my chart, and say dot update. And I believe that should now make it work. Every five seconds, it should update with our next piece of data. I do wonder if we're giving it not proper value in here. Let me just try and push 10 every time. We have our data sets, zero data dot push. We may need to have a separate um, variable to contain these. Wonder what happens if I try and adjust the labels myself. Say labels. Let's see if we can actually push test. Then I want to actually alert what my labels information is. We'll just troubleshoot this really quick and figure out what we need to get this to update. And then we have a nice animation which you can go off and adjust. So maybe it's the push itself that's not working. Can I get an alert immediately inside of my set interval function? So we get a yo, but we don't get uh, anything else. One problem with set intervals, you gotta be quick. Oh man. Okay, there we go. So let's do this a different way. We're gonna create a variable called these labels and we'll create ones called these data. These are gonna, we're gonna read the data in and then rewrite the value. So I'm gonna say these labels is equal to my data set and my label array. Then we're going to push it to these labels and then we'll set our labels inside of our data sets equal to these labels. Then after that we'll uh, set these labels to be an empty array so the next time in it's uh, we don't have to worry about that. Let's see if that will work for us. Maybe using a variable and then setting the data itself to the variable is what we need to do. I don't know if it's that we need to do this both to the data set and to the other. So I'm going to do the same thing. Um, these data is equal to data here. make it empty these data needs to be empty I mean I'll set this equal to these data maybe this will work maybe we need to add both at the same time a label and a value all right still nothing we got to troubleshoot this we're gonna set the set interval to 10 seconds so we have plenty of time and if you've ever been curious how to debug something you have no idea what's wrong with which I in this case don't really have a clue set an alert at each of these points. See how far we get. First we have A, B, C, D, and we wanna see what the last letter we get to is, and that will tell us what line has the problem. So we gotta wait 10 seconds for the first alert to pop up. Okay, so we get A, B, and just B. So that means these labels dot push is what's not working. Let me alert what these labels is, because a push should work and I'm also going to alert these labels dot length just to get a little bit more information and since I know it's going to quit pretty early I'll set it to five seconds so that way uh, we don't have to wait as long while it's waiting for this set interval so we get a undefined that's why these labels is undefined but it should be equal to data data sets I labels why is that not giving us a proper value? Let's go ahead and save and see why that is not, is it undefined data? Undefined, undefined. Oh, you know what it is? It's not within data sets. That's totally the problem. 
So now I think I'm going to be a little bit cocky and delete those alerts. And instead of data sets, it's just data labels, data labels. And let's see, fingers crossed that that works. We should just have to get rid of data sets, refer to data labels. There we go. Now we should be adding 10 to each of these. Perfect. So now what I'm going to do really quick, is set this back to like two seconds. Instead of just pushing test every time, I want to say get day of week. I'm going to create a function called get day of week. We're just going to say to get a random value from here. I'll create, uh, yeah, we can just reuse this. Days, we're gonna return math. Actually, we wanna refer to the days, and we wanna get the index math.floor, math.random between our days.length. That should give us a random day of the week each time now. Let's go ahead and run our graph. We should just get a random day instead of test, Friday, Monday, Friday, Monday, <laughs> Wednesday, there we go. I was concerned for a second. Um, it's, it's not a very good random, it seems. It might, it might be based on the time. I bet if we added like some randomness to this, it would be a lot different. Because I think, if, I, if I'm not wrong, a lot of the random functions in programming is based on your computer's time code or what the current time is. So there we go, a bit more randomness. Um, now we want to also apply a random value uh, for the data. So we'll say floor math.random and we can say times 100. Let's see if that gives us something crazy. Currently we have between one and 20, but you can see it will automatically expand the bounds uh, how it needs to. So you can see, oh, we stocks are doing pretty good right now. Oh, now they're going down. So this is just a kind of way you can mess around uh, with basic graphs. And then you can start going in and adjusting all the other values and just building what you want based on this. You can even change the graph type and check out all the documentation create all sorts of different looks and all sorts of different looking animations which visually are very awesome. This could be very useful for visualizing things in a practical Adobe extension or just to have fun and uh, visualize things in whatever way you see fit. But that's going to do it for this video guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, hit the thumbs up button down below. Hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel. All the code for this will be in the description in the GitHub link. You can download the bare bones and follow along or copy it from the Chart.js website. Also be sure to check out the link to that website in the description where you can see all their helpful guides and uses. Also in the description, follow us on Instagram for other live updates. If you're not a member of our Discord server, come and join and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, and much more. And if you'd like to help support the YouTube channel and get cool perks, you can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP, link in the description. Thanks again for watching everyone. We'll see you next time.